welcome to the CCI meeting, but um, do I do the hoo-ha after the select board open? I guess the oh, yeah. open meeting after I do it. Okay. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Honestly, okay, I, I do it after or before. Um, I will open the select board's meeting um, right now uh, at um, 6.37. I'm sorry, Tim. We just said thank congratulations, and then I <laughs> went no, out. I'm sorry. And then Denise, you should open the CCI meeting and then I'll read the hoo-ha. Yeah, so um, I'll open up the CCI meeting tonight for Thursday, May 11th, 2022. And with that, I just want to welcome Tim as a select board member. Thank you. Lily, could you read the hoo-ha? I will. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participating provisions of his March 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 38, mm -hmm. section 20, remote meeting connection noted in the agenda that is posted at town at the town website. I think you read that the fastest of anybody. I know. Thank you, Layla. You're getting better every time. Oh, All right. Good. Just meeting guidelines. Please speak one at a time. Follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct. Be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. And please raise your hand when you want to be recognized. And there aren't that many of us tonight. But And if I don't recognize you, Lily will, and she will tell me to recognize you. She's very good at that. Thank you. All right. I'm going to do roll call. Uh, Julie Chalfant. She's here. She raised here. her hand. Right. <laughs> Lily. Good here. Julie. Lily's here. Tim Hilchi. Here. Okay, not here yet. Andrea Leapson. She's here. I'm here. Carolyn Ness. Yes. Here. John is not um, an MA. You are I'm here. here. All right. Good. Yay. And I have not heard that from set two, so we'll just hold on and hope the others will join us shortly. All right. Um, boy, it's been a while since April 14th. Have people had a chance to look at the minutes from April 14th? Any corrections, additions? No? Do I hear a motion? I make a motion that we um, uh, accept the minutes as presented. Carolyn. I, I really second that motion. Okay, anybody opposed? No. Nope. All right, great. Minutes passed. Thank you. All right, uh, let's start with committee updates. And okay, I'm going to start from the bottom this time. MA. Uh, okay, um, reporting on the Energy Committee. A um, couple of things, nothing huge, but we did for um, Arbor Day slash Earth Day. Lori Bouchada organized tree planting all over the place. Uh, Pelican planted five trees, um, which they paid for. All the trees came from, from uh, the tech school and the tech school grew these trees and the energy committee used their budget money to pay for some, Pelican paid for theirs. Um, and so there were five trees planted there Tim was involved in planting uh, some trees over in what used to be called the Rua lot. I don't know whether it still is, um, but it's nice to see trees back there because Mr. Rua, uh, right, at, and one of his last acts was to spruce up his place by covering it completely with old dead Christmas trees. He didn't, he didn't like the town telling him to spruce up this place. So I thought it's appropriate there are new trees there. <laughs> Carolyn, Carolyn remembers, I'm not sure anyone else does. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> All right, so, thank you, M.A. <laughs> but that is the, that's the lot that is in the corner between North Main and five and 10. There's a lot on the left-hand side. And it's been sitting empty in the town, I think, just mows it. So these trees are nice addition to that. Then we planted uh, five, five trees over at the elementary school and I think at least three trees at the high school. And the elementary school, the nursery school, 
uh, and the kindergarten were the ones that were involved in planting the trees at the elementary school and they were delightful. So it was all good. And secondly, we are working with FERCOG to try and include Frontier, and I think Sunderland is going to also do this in our ability to include their needs in the Green Communities Grants. So FERCOG is helping us get all the data we need to get in order to qualify, allow us to apply for uh, some th some repairs and other things that are needed at the fr at Frontier. That Perfect. should happen. That should happen by. Well, our next application for green communities will be in October. October 7th, right? I think that's right. Yep. So I have a question. MA, did you put all this in your committee report? Did I? I'm sorry? <clears throat> did you put all this in your committee report on the no, drive? My committee report is lacking right now, like zero, but it's intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that we don't want to lose the information. And typically yeah. when I take the minutes, I say no. see committee reports. Yeah. Right. No, that's I fair enough. This. I know this and I okay. just haven't done it. Okay, so before we go self. any further, does anybody want to admit if they do not have a committee report? So I'll be sure to take notes on them. Me. <laughs> Andrea, have you still not managed to get it? <laughs> Um, no, I don't think it's that it's, um, I've had an unbelievably busy week and, um, we, the, the open space committee met and we're still working on drafts. Okay. There's not really much to say. Okay. All right. I, I will take notes for you and Carolyn and Thank just, you. somebody just joined us by phone. Who's that? Carolyn is talking to somebody. Jennifer. Okay. Jennifer Remillard. Hi, it's Jennifer Remillard. Sorry. Okay. All right, and Julie Chalfant, you have your hand raised. I, don't I know do. You... Um, do we have time, Emma? Can you tell us what's involved in a green communities grant? Like what types of things that covers? Um, it varies slightly year to year what they what they accept. Um, ener energy efficiency is what their primarily focus has been. Um, under most circumstances, they don't do solar or alternative energy projects. Um, they, um, that helps. That's I don't, good. I don't know whether they do geothermal, you know, that kind of thing that they may, but I'm not sure. Um, cause we've never looked for it before. Uh, it's that's primarily what it is building, you know, updating buildings, uh, gas, you know, uh, if, a saving on fuel, saving on on anything like that. So furnace works, replacement of furnaces, that that kind of stuff is what we've been doing. Primarily, it's, it's one hundred and twenty five thousand plus your population, plus your per capita formula on your, you know, the income amount. So. I think in theory, we can we could average up to 200 to 300, but that's going to be our cap. I'm not because I'm not sure 100 percent sure of the, uh, the you know the income formula, but it's not the, your basic 125,000 plus your population plus your um, formula income formula. It gives you like your cap. It's and a little. They but it is like uh, uh, like Emma says, it's mostly for energy efficiency kind of stuff, but not like a millions for geothermal. Well, but I think they might well provide us with some money to study for a study for the geothermal or doing, you know, sort of looking into some of the things that we're thinking about related to our the buildings. Right. I, well, we definitely need to consider that. And Frontier, I know, is looking for a furnace, so. I don't know where what their timing is. Probably we're too late for that, but I don't know. Well, that would be great if you could look into that. And then you can um that Mark uh Rubinsky is okay. he's wicked nice. Yeah. No, I can I can find out about that. Um 
and we've talked to Bill Hild Hildreth at for the buildings manager for the regional district. And he's, I think he's thinking about coming up with some stuff for Frontier. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, do you have anything else to report, MA? No. Oh, yes, I do. I have another committee to report. The uh, UMass uh, Clean Energy Corp. Uh, brief, a brief, all of you received some information. You may or may not have looked at it. Um, I would say that it is uh, an, an initial exciting report. I think there's some really great work in there. Um, I think, uh, ben, well, Ben uh, Wheel is interested and willing to come and talk to us, the CCI committee, when the semester slows down a little bit, maybe in a couple of weeks. Um, and we can then, you know, having looked at the presentation, be ready to ask questions uh, of him and, and talk a little further. Uh, I think it's, it's really interesting, some very interesting initial information in there. Certainly not a finished product by any means. Great, thanks, Emma. I just wanna to add to that, um, just to echo what you said. I think it was great that they came out and look at it as a stepping stone and a suggestion. And I think there are a lot of different ways we can go. And just another thing, I did send that out to everybody. I sent out the video and also the slides. So please, before he comes, I'd really appreciate it if everyone actually takes the time to look at it. You've got a couple of weeks because just to, you know, to use his time wisely so that have your questions written out ahead of time, I think would be if, if at all possible. So that way you're not asking questions that you know don't pertain to what they do. There's a lot of meat in there and probably, uh, well, maybe I should say wheat and chaff. I think you know it's our job to sort out, to try and sort it out. Um, they, uh, but, but I think, I think it's, it's a great starting point. And I, and I think the students did a great job. Um, you know they're students, so maybe we don't think that their that their their ideas are the final ideas. But I think there's some really interesting stuff in there. Thanks, Emma. Any part, Julie? Would it be possible to have that meeting joint with town building advisory? Oh uh, yeah, I mean have them come as well. That, that, that's not at all a problem, and it may be that Ben doesn't come on one of. I mean, you know, isn't able to come at our specific meeting, and maybe we set up a special meeting mm -hmm. for the whole for it. Excellent. No, I think the more people who are there, the better, for sure. And I forwarded the um, slide and the link to the video to the Town Building Advisory Committee for them to look at as well. Thanks, Julie. All right, um, next, uh, Jennifer, are you able to report? I am. I'm okay. here. Okay. Um, so the Historic Commission um, is not meeting until Monday. Um, we were supposed to meet this past past Monday, but unfortunately, a typo on the agenda postponed it. Um, we're talking about a couple of things that are going on um, with CPC monies that came from the town meeting um, and some other some other concerns. Um, nothing major to report on that. So if you have questions, you can check out the agenda posted for uh, May 16th. Um, ZBA, we're scheduled to meet tomorrow night um, regarding a one room or one bedroom, one room B and B um, on Grave Street. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that proceeds. Um, that meeting tomorrow, I believe, is at 7 p.m. Um, so if you have questions on that, you can chime or you can attend that via Zoom and in person at Town Hall. Um, there's also for the 350th Commission, um, when Carolyn speaks, I don't know if she already did, but um, I would be happy to have her give the overview because I was not at the last meeting um, due to a conflicting uh, senior center meeting. Um, also, I think, I think those are the three that I go on, um, but as quickly as the senior center director, I wanna let people know that the UMass 
um, needs assessment survey presentation is going to actually occur next Thursday, May 19th at 4.30 p.m. at the um, Wheatley Town Hall and um, Community Center, so on the 194 Chestnut Plain uh, versus the um, their newer town hall on Sandy Lane. Um, but for those who are interested in that, um, I, I'm sending out information tomorrow with a flyer, but I invited everyone who uh, with the email today. Um, so I think that's it for mine. Um, does anyone have any questions? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks, I'm going to mute myself again. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Next, uh, Carolyn. Um, the MVP um, is not meeting, committee is not meeting again until next week. Um, and we are actually changing the date because I have a conflict that day, Monday. So I'm not sure is the actual final time. But it's the, it's the 20th at 10 30. At 10 30. Okay. All right. Thank you, MA. Um, the, I was, a little, I, I don't want to say disappointed, but I, I was a little worried about the UMass report because I was hoping to have some more concrete information, but, um, after thinking about it, it's a good start in the sense that, you know, allows us to ask good questions. And, um, it made me realize that, um, we have to have a selling point and we're building for the next hundred years or next 350 years, whatever. Our buildings really need to be net zero. So that's our story. We're gonna make our campus net zero and we have to go after money to, to do that because it's gonna be expensive fix on the town hall, the church, senior housing, everything, library. Yep. Yeah. So, um, what I thought would be, I um, was wishing Satu was here. Denise and I had met with a library before, library committees, and you know it's very discouraging because it's based. The award was based on pre-COVID. So, what I was thinking is that um, we want a net zero library design. Um, we need to appeal to the library commissioners, which. Um, when we attend, attended the meeting, the appeal process or procedure is to go to the library commissioners. So we need to get on their agenda for June, the first week of June. Likelihood, 99%, they're going to turn it down because it's from the library bond bill. So they have no more money. But we need them to turn it down and tell them we need net zero building so we can go and approach Karen Polito in the, you know, the tenant governor and the governor's office to sponsor Deerfield as a pilot program for not only um, net zero buildings, but to, uh, uh, you know, support the library getting additional funding. I reached out to Westboro, talked to Slickman's office there. They transferred me over to the library director, who is really sharp, really great. Their library program is 24.3 million. They're getting 9.3 million. Again, same as us, based on old, um, you know, pre-COVID costs. Their costs are supposedly, she's not nailing it down publicly, but it's like 33 or 34 million. So very, very strongly interested in approaching the governor's office with us to get additional funding, uh, one-time funding to, um, you know, because of COVID and we're stuck. We were in line and, you know, just like normal thing, there should have been enough of an um, escalator built into the formula. And of course it's not. And getting your numbers updated is kooky because they're gonna be outdated by in two weeks. So same process, same concerns that we have, let, you know, very interested in joining together. So she's gonna to talk to our board Denise and I need to get together with our library group and say this is we we need to move forward on this and then we um, Tim is editing a letter to uh, inviting Karen Polito to our town so that we can try to um, approach her with um, us being a pilot and and you know make an attempt to show this is how you know we are gonna move forward. 
the state can't meet their climate change um, goals unless the state invests in some, some money, infrastructure money in net zero buildings. So we're willing. We were one of the first or the first, I can't, I'm not 100% sure, but we were definitely one of the ones, uh, first ones for MVP program. Problem is now, you know, almost all the communities in the state are MVP certified and the funding has not kept current. So this is our attempt to move forward. We're already investing town money. You know, let's have some additional funding. So I'm actually pretty excited. Tim also, again, uh, was has been so wonderful. He drafted an email. We asked him at our selectmen's meeting last week to draft an email up that we can attach to an invitation up to all select boards in Franklin County to organize a meeting so that we can complain jointly. The current Senate bill has no money coming out for Western Mass, which is scandalous in for inf any infrastructure projects. So we have to complain as a group. And we, the best thing to do is, you know, we had a four county meeting and they told us, you know, go to all these meetings and find out about grant funding and stuff. Guess what? There's no money. So, I mean, not anything, but it wasn't already available and it's little money. So we're gonna start organizing. And um, there's a few communities that I've already talked to like Mar Marguerite Willis in Charlemont and, few others that are, we're gonna make a stink. So hopefully we're gonna meet the first week of June and um, stir the pot and invite Karen Polito out here. And, you know, we're referencing Suzanne Bump's report and we'll get some action. Well, Carolyn, um, what I just, I know Casey sent a letter and when we discuss this, um, I believe that you as the select board have to vote on sending the letter. Yes. Yes, um, but Tim is, Tim is wonderfully writing it up okay. and, and then, you know, and I know you're working on it too with him. And then what we can do is we can uh, have Casey circulate it to the select board and then we can come in and sign it. Okay. It's just an invitation. It's not, we're not actually spending money. So it doesn't need a formal vote. It just needs consensus. So we, we need to get the invitation out as fast as possible. I'm, I'm hoping we can get it out, mm -hmm. you know, maybe by tomorrow even. We, we got to get her on our schedule. We, we've got to get this money before it's already gone. Yeah. So I'm hoping that we can pressure a few million dollars out here. Well, I'm kind of excited. So our story is net zero the next 350 years. And it's the whole campus wide project. And we're gonna get everybody on board with all the buildings. So I, I'm pretty excited. And it, it you know- I love started... that, Carolyn. Well. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer, I can't see the screen, but I love it. I love the story. I think it's great. And I think you have a lot of capacity to go forward with that. I mean, for marketing and for everything, that's a wonderful story to have. Well, and oh, uh, other thing is there's going to be, there's new select board members in Sunderland and Waitley. So we're going to have um, a joint select board meeting to talk about the senior center. I was going to go to the um, other selectmen's meetings just to say that they were asking for net zero senior center in addition to our town hall, but um, I think we need to have a meeting so we can get everybody up to speed on that. So that's going to happen in the next week or two, too. Hope you get that's to awesome. Something. What? <laughs> I just said, I hope you get some sleep. Oh, well, I have these ideas at two o'clock in the morning and I... <laughs> And I'm like, yes, this is our story, MA. You know, you started it. It's like, don't be depressed about that that presentation. I'm like, right, you can't be depressed. It's, you know, we're gonna be going forward. So we have to just figure out how we're gonna do it. That's all. You have to be creative. And we, we all have a, we all we have to have a plan on how to get everybody involved so that there's so many voices from Deerfield, they they just won't forget about us. Well, Janet Ward called me from town meeting. She had heard our plea to contact people. She got a letter with 77 
people from her condo association out there in, um, you know, um, Stillwater, by Stillwater, that, you know, pressuring Joe and, and um, Natalie to put some of our the money into a senior center here. So I have to say, and then Jennifer is, is doing a, a letter campaign, writing campaign to get people from the senior center to write. So I can do it for the condo out here. Good. That's the thing. You've got to write letters and, and make sure that we have voices. So the Joe and Natalie, right? That's who we're sending them to. Okay. Right. And Carolyn, I think it's really important that you do let us know that whoever is doing this, let all of us know so that we're not, um, you know, so right. we know what's going on. <laughs> well, Janet just did it on her own. So I mean, that's what we have to do. We asked at town meeting that people please, you know, contact the legislators and she did with 77 people. So that was pretty, she wrote the letter and they signed on. So that's Carolyn, what, what is, what is Janet's last name? For the for the men, Ward W A R D. Okay, Carol. The reason why I said that is because if we know the various groups that have done that, you know, then if something doesn't happen, then it's a follow up letter saying, "Hey, these different groups, you had seventy one people from here and all these other people. So why have we not heard back?" Right. Well, it's wrong. <laughs> where's my hand? All right. And do you want you have to um, on the three hundred fiftieth report on that? Julie, oh, has, that. Julie has a question. I have a question about the letter writing. Um, do we have a consistent message so that the letters are all hitting the same point? Because we don't want hundred letters with a hundred different asks. That's not good. I know. Yeah. You're looking for a template, right? Yeah. Well, or a topic. Now that we have something. now that we have the story, we'll get this letter you know, Tim is adding some kind of letter for our story inviting um, uh, Karen Polito here. So we can circulate that to everybody. And that will now be the story. We're having a net zero campus. What Janet wrote about was um, that the need for a three, three town regional senior center. And I think that's what um, Jennifer Remillard's uh, writing campaign was directed to too. Okay. So, whoops. Can you read your hand up? Um, the 350th, the three fiftieth is moving forward. We're having um, great events, um, a lot of history events, obviously. But um, I think we're going to use the 350th as building for the next 350 years. Deerfield has been here successfully. It's a lovely community, but we're moving forward for the next 350, and that's going to fit into our um, net zero building story. Okay, Tim. Um, why don't you, I'll, I'll pick it up when you get to me in the list. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so let me get to who is next. Actually, you're, you're next, Tim. <laughs> okay, well, I'll start off with the letter. I mean, because uh, the others aren't here. The, the letter um, that I'm crafting and that Denise and I have been working on references Baker Polito's net zero 2050. Then it references Deerfield's plan for Deerfield 2030. Then it talks about um, the various projects CCI has been talking about, including the Tilton Library. And um, we can hone it a little more to be, you know, um, regional senior center with net zero, you know, et cetera. But uh, I, and it also, um, leaves us an opportunity to talk about the Baker Polito administration is proposing sending $700 million back to taxpayers as individuals. And my thought is rather than sending that money back to individuals and fueling inflation in Massachusetts, why don't you send the money out to Western Mass where you've been neglecting us and let us fix our infrastructure so our, our regional economy can grow. Um, so that's a story that you can tell alongside the net zero. Community Preservation Committee, we're in the process of reorganizing um, because I will be leaving the committee. So somebody from the Conservation Commission will move in. We're talking about um, shifting uh, Lily's function as the moderator's appointee to the housing component that we don't currently have filled, finding another person, perhaps Kate Lawless, um, to uh, 
be appointed by the moderator um, and looking for an active member from the recreation sphere, whether it's actually someone from the recreation department or a coach of a, of a school team um, who would have you know, recreation cred um, and who would attend meetings. And then um, finally, uh, I, there's one other member that we need to, to fit in here, but uh, I think it's a select board appointee. So we need another person beyond Kate Lawless to actually get a full compliment again. Um, we're basically done with the funding cycle for this year. And I think the next committee needs to focus on figuring out if the cycle fits properly within whether we should move it forward and start start the process sooner, maybe in September rather than in December, so that people have more time to prepare and improve applications and so forth. Uh, the uh, Conservation Commission is also in the process of reorganization. Um, we will probably be naming a new chair May 26. Um, there's a very, very full calendar. Um, there are two notice of intents at this point and possibly a third. Um, I will not, I will be <clears throat> opening the meeting and then turning it over uh, once we reorganize to the new chair. Um, we have a new candidate who would be filling a vacancy in at the end of June. Um, he's a forester and he has a master's in forestry, works for the state forestry division. Um, so it would expand the commission's expertise. Um, and we're hoping to, um, it's possible that Bill Marapisi might, might be willing to run for reelection or reappointment. Uh, that's unclear yet. Uh, I will not be participating in the notice of intent public continuation of the public hearing on the park uh, because now I'm a select board member, so that wouldn't work. Um, and I will be dropping out of the meeting when that public hearing starts. Uh, Treehouse is starting a notice of intent because they have a phase three uh, project to develop the exterior portions of the land around the building. Um, they've already made some, uh, some, some of their NR, NOI is about uh, expanding the uh, revegetation around the Bloody Brook that runs through the property and various other um, potentially uh, good environmental changes on the property, but um, the commission will probably require a peer review at Treehouse's expense to actually um, verify the delineations that have to be done because the wetlands have not been delineated on the property for many, many years. So um, that will all take place. And um, probably by the end of this meeting, I will for all intents and purposes be a quiet member until June 30th, um, just on, on any project that has, doesn't originate from the town and I'll be there to provide a quorum, essentially. So that's it. Any questions? That's a lot. Uh, just a comment to get back to Julie's, Julie's uh, point about the letter. You know, I think that's a really good idea. And I think that the letter that was written that Tim, that you wrote earlier to uh, Karen Polito and Jim McGovern, Richie Neal, and we get CC'd uh, Natalie and Joe, basically, basically the same thing, just not the net zero. So I think this was the point of this is really to get her out here physically so we can surround her and talk to her. <laughs> she's, she's actually been really supportive of local yeah. things. And if we can get her on board, then she'll get Charlie on board. He, cause he could, he doesn't really yeah. care about what's happening out here, but she's proved that she's, you know, a friend out here. So, I, I mean, she's willing to come, I'm sure. Yeah. Lily? Yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, the complete neighborhoods application that was submitted by senior housing um, is looking for getting the geothermal funding planning. That's, this would be the analysis and that's, you know, studies. 
that's what we applied for. And we also said, and so this, what I'm just saying is that um, this further um, backs up what Carolyn's talking about. In our application, we said we would be a model. We actually, that's what we wrote. We said we want to be a model for small um, communities. And um, so just so I just wanted to bring that up because that will show that months ago we started doing this. And we should hear about that. And I don't want to jump my gun so much, but I just wanted to, to remind everybody that that is in the works right now too, in, in the pot with all this stuff. It was, that's what made me think of it, I think. Um, and because somehow we had to pull the library in. We can't have the library. I know the library design that they came up with, you know, the glass on the north side, and they were not actually going to build that anyway, but, um, we have to make them net zero too. And so that's an excuse to get the extra money. We had COVID and then we want net zero, which is more expensive. So that to me is a good argument to go to Karen Polito and say, this is one-time shot money. Instead of giving back the 700 million, let's you know give a few million to, to Deerfield to do this kind of planning, to show that we can do the next move. We're willing to be out front for you. And I mean, this is a huge opportunity. We have all these buildings in one place. Um, it's truly a campus. And um, Tim, Denise and I were at a, you know, the webinar yesterday, um, which was kind of a waste of time, but they did have um, a talk about availability of money and they do have a mass trails program up to $50,000 for design. And I thought, you know, this is, this small little um, grant um, would be the one that we would want to show that we're connecting from the park all the way down to Elm Street. And it would be, you know, a walkable path. So accessible to all levels, you know, benches, you know, take your walker out, whatever, um, a safe um, path that connects the whole town. So that might be something as well. Right. Okay. Thanks, Carol. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Um, if no other questions, I'm going to move it on to Andrea. Hi. Uh, I apologize for not having my report um, available to you all. But as I said, the um, open space committee continues to meet uh, review uh, to create a huge document uh, explaining, you know, where the, uh, the the town is. Interestingly somehow I was left off the um, email chain that presented the, um, the documents we were gonna look at in advance. And so um, I didn't have a chance to study them very closely, uh, but a lot of that document was about the community setting. And I know that Alan is working on um, updating it. It's, you know, seven, eight years old and uh, there are some really kind of yucky references that wouldn't pass muster these days. He met today with Pete Thomas, local historian. And uh, so they're working on, uh, on, on those things. And otherwise, um, I don't have anything to report. Okay, great. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks. Um, John just, John Pachork just texted me. He's actually at work. And as soon as he finishes up, he's gonna join the meeting. I'm finished up. Oh, come on, there you are. Okay. Well, on because I was going to call on you next. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Um, I think most know the park uh, is on for the planning board on May 19th. It's on for CONCOM on the 26th. I know um, Proterra just got their responses to all the questions in. I believe that that came in earlier today. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get some good answers by the end of the month. Uh, we're also going to work with the FERCOG up at uh, the bidding. Uh, division up the Franklin Regional Council of Governments with Proterra to see if we can get this out to bid even faster should the Planning Board and Conservation Commission approve it with uh, conditions. Otherwise, normally it takes Proterra a good six to 10 weeks to get it fully put out um, for bid. So, you know, we're going to try and reduce that timeline to get construction moving as fast as possible. The church, I've got to work with Deerfield Academy um see who to get in there to evaluate the asbestos but we are still on for a fall rebuild 
Town Hall, Deerfield Academy today told me they'd begin to look at the mini split units um, in that main area. Years ago, I had Deerfield Academy put two mini splits in for free after we did a special town meeting and it was 94 degrees in there one night and, and all of us were just dying of heat. So those, uh, those keep losing charge. They're gonna come in and look at those and hopefully fix those in the near future, possibly even uh, tomorrow or Friday. So that was good news. Looking at getting a quote for some exterior painting of Town Hall, just some minor work. I don't wanna to put too much money into uh, the building until we figure out you know, what our permanent plans are really with the, uh, the full campus here. And we're also looking at doing just some uh, some minor parking lot work, expanding some minor uh, minor spots for parking because you, literally there's no parking some days in the town hall where Carolyn or other people are pulling up out back and there's not even a spot available anymore. Senior center, grammar school, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now that we've got through annual town meeting, I think the select board would really need to make a determination of where would you like to proceed with a building or design committee. Would you like to use the town buildings advisory committee and have Julie run with it with uh, we have a pretty good core group of folks on the town buildings advisory committee. But the first thing that uh, when we met with Dan, uh, the project engineer for the library, Tim and I met with Dan and had a substantial conversation with him walked through the uh, the grammar school senior center and Dan recommended a project manager. Uh, faster than later, he recommended getting somebody on board in the near future to help us write the uh, design to put it out to bid for the architects themselves. And they actually professionally do that versus having Casey write it as a chief procurement officer. This is what they specialize in and what they do. So I think our first step, and, and Julie would have to correct me or, or Tim, but first step is to have the select board vote to designate the authority over to the town buildings advisory committee so we can expend those funds. Step number two is to work with Casey, our chief procurement officer, to identify a bidding process to get a project manager on board. Step three is to have the project manager come in and evaluate what we're looking to do and put out bid specs to hire an architecture firm. And all this is gonna take 12 weeks or so, so we really do wanna get moving. So we get some nice concept and designs towards January, February, to come back for annual town meeting of next year with the true costs of the project. And those were my quick notes. Sorry, I got tired about work. Excellent, John. Okay. Oh, I have a question, John. This is Jen Remillard. I'm on the phone versus in uh, on Zoom today. Um, <clears throat> can someone please let me know when, um, when y'all have a group go through the building? Um, because we're still in there for the senior oh, center staff. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that would that would just be helpful. Um, we're working on figuring out where we're moving to next, but if you could just keep us posted as to when uh, processes are going to go on in the building so we know what to expect um, for us, that'd be helpful. Yeah, more than happy to work with you. Yep. Thank you, Jennifer. Andrew has had, you're either hiding your face Thank or you got your hand up. <laughs> oh, I have my hand up. I have my hand up. Um, uh, I wonder if there is um, a physical document that Proterra has, has created that um, could be um, shared with uh, planning board members. I'm going to be out of town next week. And I would really like to have that before I leave, if that's possible, because I'm going to be attending the um, planning board meeting around about the park uh, remotely, and it would be really helpful to have that document. Is it available, John, at the um, at town hall? I don't know if they've put it up on the website yet. They certainly <laughs> should in the next 24 hours. Uh, all you have to do is just send Casey a quick email. I believe she thinks she forwarded it to Carolyn and I earlier. She forwarded us Jesse's response with no attachment attached. So otherwise, I just send it over to you, and it wouldn't be a big deal. Okay. Yeah, so I've got to email Casey in the morning and say, hey, the attachment did come through. Can you resend it to me, please? Yeah, Andrea, okay. Typically, it's Casey will send it to Annalee, then Annalee will send it. But Annalee is out in California. So I'm going to be in Virginia Beach until Monday. So it would be helpful for Casey to send it out to just all of us instead of waiting for Annalie, because I think that would just speed up the process. Because yeah, we definitely want to have a look at that 
be able to digest before the meeting on the 19th. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I can, once I get my hands on it tomorrow, I can ask Jen, um, the assistant town administrator, just to cycle it out to the entire planning board. Right. That would be great. Thank you. Lily? Uh, so, Chief, you forgot something really important. You had some really good news to share. <laughs> my head spins, Lily. Are we talking about the grant? What are we talking about? Yeah. Yes, um, I, I don't know if the selectmen have talked about it on camera. The state has asked us to keep it quiet still until they do the announcements. However, we have got our formal award for $928,000 for the grant for the park. Great. That's pretty exciting. Right. I know, it's pretty I darn know. exciting. <laughs> yep, they've just asked us to keep it quiet until the Secretary of Energy and Affairs decides which uh, which places she may attend and actually announce in person and do a big public event out of it. Um, but obviously we have the formal award letter. The select board has signed off on the, the contractual agreement. I've signed off on it. Casey signed off on it. And Jen, the town clerk has signed off on it. So hopefully that will be going back to the state in the near future. I think next Monday, if memory serves correctly, 14th or 15th, something like that. Maybe it's even the 16th. We have a, a mandatory grant meeting at 11 o'clock in the morning on Zoom with the state of how to report everything back and get reimbursed funding. Okay. So the big part is $928,000 and we can't put in for any reimbursement for things we've already done. So any money we've already ex expended, we, uh, we've expended at 100%. Yep, but from an actual contract signing perspective, once the state signs it and sends it back, anything invoice to us after that date, we can get reimbursed at 50% up to the 928,000. And the maximum grant award that you can possibly get is 1 million. It can be a $2 million project, but the max grant award is uh, $1 million and we get the 928. Fabulous. Good job. Well, that's awesome. All right, let's see who. Oh, Thanks, Lily, because my brain just spins. Days just blend. <laughs> Oh, it's just nice to have good news, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. All right, um, Julie. So I'm sort of a, we're in the middle of a lot of things and have nothing concrete, right? So finance committee, we survived town meeting. So um, we will have at least one more meeting this fiscal year to look at the end of year um shift funds if we need to i may have an another meeting as well um i have some goals for this summer but um i need to talk them through with brenda and figure out what's achievable for the summer and i don't really want to talk about it yet so um but we'll you know continue on in the same vein um town building advisory we met last week we talked about the people who are at the meeting were um open to becoming the committee for overseeing the senior center, old grammar school, whatever, but there is definitely a discussion along the lines of what's involved. So um, I need to, my plan was to go in and talk to Casey next week um, and maybe see who else I can get involved in that discussion and just figure out, figure out where we go. Um, I feel like in addition to um, I think it would be nice to have an assessment of the status of the building. There have been some questions raised. The once you watch watch the thing from the UMass folks, all of a sudden you get all worried about the bricks. Um, and I, I think it would be useful to have a, a second opinion look at the um, status of the building as, as part of our initial process. Um, but again, we, we just need to get going on all of this and figure out what's next. Um, but nothing's going to happen until next week, so because life is crazy. So and it, so sorry, I don't have much. Um, Tim, Carolyn, you have a question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I'm particularly interested in rebuilding projects and um, have rebuilt brick houses and buildings before. So um, I wanted you to tell me. What is the, how big is the, t, the town buildings committee? Um, how many people are on it? There's six plus Kevin who's ex officio at the moment. Um, There's room for a couple more, Tim, don't worry. 
Sounds like a select representative would be nice, Tim. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> be great. So one of the held an experience. Yeah, it would be. Go ahead. Um, I I asked my husband um to look at the presentation that you forwarded to us, Denise, so that he could figure out who we should approach about the bricks. Um, I mean, he has a lot of experience, this is over 40 years of experience with building maintenance. So, and all kinds of background in it. So I, I think um, if we can figure out who is the, uh, an expert, it would need to be somebody that handles net zero buildings and reconstruction of and re, you know renovation of older buildings for net zero buildings. So I don't know, we'll have to figure out something, some expert to come in. Cause I agree with Julie, we need, a, we need an outside opinion that is really um, an expert. But I didn't I, ask the um, guy Ben Wheel when he was in that thing. So I think one of the definite questions for him when he comes to talk to us is just that. I did notice in his slides, they say um, external insulation or glazing. And I, I'm pinning a lot on those two words, but I, I, I just feel like there's gotta be another answer beyond building glass box around the building. Um, when my husband was working for Selvick University, they did a lot of, um, you know, that's on Beacon Hill. And so um, they did a lot of historical renovation with brick. And I don't know if it was net zero building, but he's had some background with the historic renovations and with brick. So I'm hoping he'll come up with somebody that has a good reputation. Yeah, Tim, you've got your hand up again. Yeah, I'm, uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, the, the interesting thing I've learned in this process is that you ask 10 different people the same question and you get 10 different answers. And then you ask Mr. Corpita, who's been living with bricks for 50 years, and he says, these bricks are fine. And there are some that are spalling. And that happens in all brick buildings. And it's usually because one brick wasn't particularly good and it got wet or, or whatever. Um, so you know, uh, I'm not an expert and I'm not suggesting I'm an expert, but I would suggest that um, I was a little surprised by the, you know, the glass house. That's just, uh, uh, to me, that's absurd, but that's just me. I'm more than happy to arrange a meeting for Paul to come back to him and, and you and I can walk it with Paul. And I have not watched the UMass, so I apologize. I've not seen it yet but we could have Paul come back anytime and, and he's amazing and he'll walk right through the inside and exterior again with us. And he'll tell us exactly what he sees. It's, it's not a problem. And that's exactly probably, the person uh, I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. And we should do it in the context of the, you know, the town building advisory committee or whatever committee we yeah. set up for it. Let's say, because, and, and you should record it as you walk along, please. I think that that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, because, um, I don't know how to raise my hand on the phone. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Jennifer. No, I'm just talking. It's Jennifer. Um, one of the things that I did like about their report from UMass and I thought was really pertinent was the way that the glass, cold air comes underneath the glass as it looks like from the slides, and it comes in and creates heat in, you know, inside the, the glass and in the building. And the way that they compared it to some of the structure over at UMass Amherst, um, you know, is really good way to keep the brick in case, you know, most of it in glass. I mean, I don't know, um, I see the building every day when the person from DA was there evaluating the sloped part of the roof with Trevor that afternoon, he was looking at the damage that was done and continues to occur to the brick underneath the um, vents from the kitchen and the way that the water trickles down. So, I mean, there's a lot of damage to the brick on the outside and it's per the water is permeating into the brick because it's a very porous material. And the report calls out the quality of the brick that was created in that time frame that that building was created. So, I mean, while the person you're referring to has had 50 years of experience, there's a lot of things that are going wrong with that, with that brick. I mean, it's crumbling along the side. Um, you know, when you're around the foundation and on the outer pieces, I mean, bricks just crumbling out. Um, so there's, you know, 
having the glaze on the existing brick, but I mean, there's still going to be um, quite a bit of replacement that's going to need to be done on, you know, so Jennifer, I'm just, on I'm just gonna there. I was just going to interrupt because I, I think that we've got varied opinions on this and listening to Ben and what he said and what Paul's going to say. So, you know, at this point, I just like to reserve all of our comments until we get a couple of different experts in there because, you know, we can what if this situation all night. I mean, you know, we went over a lot of that when we did the site visit with Ben and some of the issues. And we, we don't even have the full report yet. So what they said was great, but I think there's going to be even more. And I don't recall, I think MA, didn't you say that? Um, there's additional. Well, the U, they were, it was the YouTube video that, that wasn't going to be up, but it is. So right. I think. And I thought, no, I thought I there think, was there was more. I think that there are the slides and the YouTube video. There was something about a PDF, but I don't know what I think that's the slides. So I don't know. I we, think there may be something else or may not be. Okay, thanks. It was my understanding that we have we have the YouTube, we have the slides. I sent that out to everyone, but it was my understanding that there was something else to really wrap it up. But you know, there they, may well be. Yeah. yeah, we're at the end of the semester too, which is crazy. So I think we would possibly get that in a few weeks. But yeah. you know. and, and and Ben, if Ben will definitely be able to do provide that when he comes and does a presentation if we don't get anything else. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um Lily. Give your report. Sorry, my mute but my unmute wasn't working. Yes. Um so um the survey is out. We are at a return rate of about 7%. Uh, we've, I've tried posting on Deerfield now. I've been to the senior center three times. Nobody showed up today. Um, the problem what we're facing is, I know Andrea feels my pain about trying to get survey responses, but the problem is that everybody has confused, not everybody, many people have confused this with the senior services survey that went out months ago. And they're like, I already did this. And they're tossing their postcards away. So Jennifer's been trying to help. Um, and I would just ask you, if you see anybody with gray hair, tell them to <laughs> fill out the survey. And um, if they threw away their postcard, they can get in touch with me. Um, and that's posted actually on the town website and the town Facebook page about how to get a hold of me and I can get them their key codes. Um, the last time we did a survey for senior housing 20 years ago, I think we had some insane response rate of like 37%. It was so high. So 7% is discouraging, but we persist. We do not give up. Um, but I did find I did go online and I was like, like, OK, so for an online survey, what is a valid response rate? Uh, you know, what is the minimum percentage you need to be considered to be a valid sociological representation? And I found this comment that said, as the attention span of the consumers is reducing, averaging sur average survey responses have plummeted to below 10 percent response rates. I thought mm -hmm. it was Interesting that they're tying it to <laughs> our attention span. Um, John, did you have a question for me? Yeah, just remind me and I will send it out townwide. Excellent. I'll yeah, I'll send I it out. I was going to ask if you could do that reverse 911, but I think we want to save that for emergencies. I don't know. Well, a lot of times I don't do the phone call because I have email addresses for about 1,600 people in there and okay. cell phones. So, yeah, when I sent the other survey out, we got a massive influx due to it. So, so I I will send you, I will write something up that tells people how to get a hold of me if they threw away their postcard. That would be awesome. Yeah, as long as I have the uh, the link to it, I can send everybody an email and a uh, a text message on their phone with the link right to come up on their mobile. Oh, you're awesome. And Lily, I'm, I'm sorry to say this again, but nothing beats handing people a piece of paper at the transfer station. That's how we got our response rate up. Well, were you actually handing surveys out or just? Uh, we had surveys with, we had surveys with us. 
mm -hmm. people were not using them. They said that they could, you know, if we had the link on the piece of paper that they would be able to do that. We handed out over a hundred pieces of paper at the, um, at the transfer station. I've done my time at the transfer station, but I'll go back. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, Lily. It's really fun. <laughs> Lily, bring, bring a list with the passcode. So yes, if you get yes, Joe so Smith, you can give yes. him his passcode before yeah. he leaves. Yeah, because that's the problem that they that everybody has a unique key code. But thank you. I will begin by sending a thing to the chief, and uh, I will maybe we might extend our deadline too. I'd hate to do that, but um. So anyway, but we're but that has not prevented us from moving forward on the site feasibility and demographic feasibility studies, and uh, we're working with Alyssa LaRose from FERCOG and Anna Lee. Um, has sort of volunteered since she's not going to come to any of our meetings that she's going to work with Alyssa on the scope of work to send out RFPs for the feasibility studies. So that's a you know a separate another path. So we're going to be working on that at the same time. What's your deadline? Well, right now it's May thirtieth. That's fine. I'll send it out Friday. I'll program it to go out at like five or six o'clock. Okay, I will send you um, verbiage and uh, just a little thing with the link of short text with a link to send. Thank yep, you. If you, uh, you know, if you, you earned your pay today. Yeah, if you uh, if you draft up the email that you would like to go out, I'll uh, I'll cut and paste that in, and then okay. the text message is 140 characters. So I don't know if we just want to program the link into the town website, where it brings them right to the town website. Just think about it. Okay, thank and you. And let me know. Okay. Yeah, text messages is limited what I can do. Emails unlimited. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing I, I did sort of touch on um, before is that we have not yet heard, we will hear from the Complete Neighborhoods grant in May, whenever that is. And Julie, did you have a question for me? What are the sites you're looking at? The, the campus, <clears throat> the concept of somewhere like replace taking the town hall off kind of a concept and putting senior housing there but we're look, also looking at the Brayburn site um, those are the two sites that we put into our proposals do you have any, any other ideas yeah I was just wondering because we we did a, the the big survey of all the town properties and um, right now I've seen some preliminary um data from our survey because it's all online it's really fast and it the preference for the south deerfield central village is gigantic compared to yeah i know some property that's going to go up on north hillside that's uh quite extensive that would be beautiful but you don't have that walking distance to downtown right. you don't have that's the walking right. distance to the senior yeah. center you you know it's the same argument as the park well why don't you put the park up there because it's not next to Frontier in Deerfield Elementary. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's it for uh, senior housing. Um, can you just um on the complete neighborhoods, Lily? I you could just touch on that the design work for the geothermal is part of our campus that we're hoping to hear on too. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean that when we when we wrote that that grant. It said specifically two things we would wanted. So this grant gives services, not money. So we wanted um, help with designing geothermal system for the entire campus. And we also asked for, um, because I had actually run that sort of by them ahead of time. And they said, well, we don't even know if we have geothermal people. So um, they may look on it as an opportunity but I, it, as a backup, I also said we also do need um, we need professional services to assess the whole campus and come up with a design for parking and landscaping and water water management kind of a thing. So we, you know, we're trying, and we'll hear, we'll just hear. Yeah, Lily, that sort of touches on the geothermal too because um, Ben's presentation it was. A combination of, and I forget what it's called, the boreholes, the vertical boreholes, and then also the um, the coils. Yeah. And you can put coil. 
you can put coils underneath a parking lot. So, you know, that's, that's really important to, you know. Yeah, and if that means no plowing, then that saves money too. <laughs> that would, yeah, that would be great. All right, so I'm, I'm just gonna report on some things. Uh, let's see, planning board, again, we've got our meeting on May 19th and about the park. And I think, I think that's all we have on there. So we're hoping that that will go well and that we get, what is that? sorry. Um, and that we get the information ahead of time plenty so we can um, try and wrap things up pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, I think, I don't know if I reported on this, but Carolyn and I went to Western Mass. I don't remember if I said that last time, the Western Mass um, MMA conference. And at that point, Carolyn had an opportunity and she did speak with Joe again and about the importance. I, Carolyn, I think you did mention the MVP and Joe seemed to say, oh, can you remind me again about that? And I don't know whether that has happened, but um, the MVP, as far as funding for the sewer, when initially they said, no, you can't do it. Joe said, that's crazy. So I guess we need to follow up on that. Um, Still 20 million. I checked with Kara Rumsfeld. They have not got, um, they have not gotten any additional money. So mm -hmm the 20 million for this next round and it is only nature-based bio oh, geez. Okay. no no infrastructure money for sewer so um and there's nothing in this new senate bill so i i don't know what's going on um but that's why we've got to have our story and be just run with it okay. all right um you know just wanted to mention if i was i think all of you were there but at town meeting we did have the um the display board, thank you again, Julie, for the idea. I just implemented what you, your, your design. And we passed out uh, flyers, which I think were really good. There's only one grumpy person who will be, shall be na nameless. And she was actually very rude. Everyone else was really nice and took the flyer. So, so and it's now um, residing in town hall. So anyone who goes there can actually see some of the what I liked about it is what, what Julie did. Is she also um, attached uh, any kind of funds along with the, the project. So I think that was really helpful. So thanks again for that. Do you hear um, anything as of today on the um, crossing, that little um, crossing? Grade? The shared streets and spaces? No, yeah. I checked on that. John also checked on that. <laughs> we yeah, sort of crossed paths on that. And no, we haven't heard anything. And that was through the FERCOG. So. I'm sure as soon as they know that we'll, we'll know as well. Okay. So I think we'll Thank you. That. And then um, I had another meeting. I've been working with Alice and Casey on the connect on the community one stop grant and you know, 400,000. And you know, we're not really sure because this is a new grant process. And so, you know, as you go through it, more things unfold. And, you know, as I said before, we've got the ability to get $400,000, but there could potentially be more, but we're just not totally sure. I think Alice said she would know better when she really starts plugging things in, because right now she's just working offline. So, you know, that will be to be determined. And I think we'll have another meeting next week. But what's important about that is that we will have to complete that and that, and we we're putting that in for um, designs and for, um, you know, for architects, and whatever planning. So we would have to have that completed by June, 2023. So John, that goes along with what you were saying, if we can get that done by January. So just to let you know. And then um, let's see, I was on that. I, I thought we were on the same webinar yesterday and Carolyn, you said you talked about the, oh God, the pass. And I, I sort of bowed out after because I had to do something else, but I did, did well, you watch the culvert yeah. spot? Culvert? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Um, okay. It was okay. kind of waste, you know, it was kind of a waste, but I wasn't sure whether that was new information for you. But um, I no. think what was really inter important, if you already know this, let me know. But for the culvert culverts, you can put that in. There's not that much money. It's it's not a match. It's you would get it, but um, it wouldn't cover the whole project. And I thought, what well, one thing that was interesting is you can propose a project with up to three structures in the same local connected stream network per application. So I don't know if that's relevant. Um, is that? 
Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, we we actually um, we're better off if we can try to get more Chapter ninety money, which we are getting. Um, there's a little bit more coming uh, potentially, and it's better to do it under Chapter ninety. But um, um, thank you, Denise, because we you know it's good to it's good to keep our options open. Yeah. Um, I I know the. Geez, I don't know where my notes are on that grant that you were talking about, that community one stop. Yeah. Um, because I went to that uh that meeting, that webinar on that. And it is one phase leads to another phase. And mm -hmm. um I think it's capped at actually two million um total once you go through all the phases. One's planning, one's implementation, then additional planning, then more implementation. So it is actually perfect to do some of these different ones. I can't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the mat, uh, notes. I can't find my notes on that, but um, that's one to keep working on because mm -hmm. that's really productive and um, apparently is funded to the tune of, uh, you know, almost a hundred million dollars. So that is, and that's new. So that would be quite a lot of money. Um, and, right. and those phases are, have small caps. But totally, you can get a few million. So, and and I think that depends, and I think we'll find that out because the way we're the way our entry point into that funding is it's the rural and small towns because we're under seven thousand people. So right. that's how we have to apply. And then the question is, you know, how does it branch out from there? So you know, we'll we'll find out. But I mean, it would be terrific if we could get more money than that. Yeah. So, oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I, I was, I, you know, I just couldn't, I just had to do something else. So I figured I would just fast when I got the um, recording, I just fast forward through to see if there was anything else that was really uh, relevant. There really wasn't much. It gets it's a lot tedious. Not, yeah. yeah. Not anything more than we already know. Okay. okay. Well, that's good to know that I won't bother. But, you know, I think it would be when Joe's recording comes out, I think that would be interesting. Not all of it, but um, a few things. I think would be good and you know she's got slides on there too so when when i get that i'll send that out to the group to anybody else who has signed up you know would have access to that as well so remember all these things connect so even if it's small money it does add up if we're getting if we're chipping away at the costs like the parking costs like the landscaping costs you know design costs all that kind of stuff is if you can do it for the whole campus, that's a huge bonus. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, you just got to always monitor that reporting regulations because sometimes it's so cumbersome and such a pain in the rear end that it's not worth the five, 10, 50 grand. Yep. I know. I know. All yeah, right. Denise, when you're done, I forgot one thing I think oh, that go I ahead. To touch base on uh, the steeple. I know um, we originally talked about it. We got a quote in to engineer a fix for the steeple. So um, one of the things that Julie asked about was, and I forgot if I shared this at last meeting or not, was a, a actual estimate for how much it would cost to fix it. So the engineering quote came in around $26,000 and they're estimating the fix to the steeple at 55 to 75. So the steeple in of itself are looking at roughly a hundred thousand dollars to engineer it and fix it. Then that was a good choice that we didn't re redirect the money for the re church repairs because we had already voted one hundred and fifty thousand for the church repairs. So between what we have to do that DA isn't doing and this repair, we have the money already set aside. Yeah, I know so. Julie had her hand up too. I just want to add that it's not just the steeple, right? There's a couple trusses that the end, what he had some word for it, shearing or something. Um, so it's more than just the steeple. It's it will fix the steeple problem, but it will also like it's a structural part of the building that really needs to be repaired. Yeah. Relieving or something that they would call it. Yeah, there's a bulge in one one section of this exterior wall that's related to the tenon in one of the uh, this little thing structures yeah. snapped I off. I forget the word, but it's essentially a yeah. piece of the end of the truss had sheared off and the, mm -hmm. it's providing the support it should anymore. And Julie, I think when Ben and his students went through, I think he, he mentioned that as well. 
So, so that was it. Yeah, that's interesting. That's great. We have two experts agreeing. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so I, I think I went through everything that I need to. Is, um, is there any other business not reasonably anticipated? And then when do you want to meet again? Well, Denise, after we have. I'm sorry, um, but, but Denise, you had on here the next item is to report back on progress made with legislators on securing funding. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, you know, we sort of, I know I, we were going to have a big discussion on that after everyone gave the reports, but it seemed like that was integrated into the report. I mean, is there anything else? I mean, we were going to talk about the letter, you know, that. All right. that yeah. I think that if we could summarize, so there, there's a campaign underway. Right. Correct. All right. And if you, I, I'm, I'm going to document this campaign because you were going to tell me what's happening in it. Tim is right. Tim is uh, drafting a letter for the select board. Right. Yeah. To invite Karen Polito, right. And advocate for our net zero um, building campus concept. Um, and also additional money for the library is net zero. As long as we, right. Denise and I are going to meet with them. Hopefully they'll be on board. Um, the, so um, so I'm going to call this a library relief. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> In the oh, notes. That's a good idea. That's a good yeah. idea. Um, we also want Jim McGovern to come out as well. Yeah. And Jim McGovern as well too. Right. So the letter may be crafted slightly differently for him. I'm not really sure. Um, right. It will, it will be asking him and Richie Neal you know, earmarks, specific mm -hmm. earmarks in the Build Back Better, whatever's going forward. Who knows what, what's actually going to go forward, but there will be something probably. Okay. So we got to ask for an earmark on the federal level. You know, and, and just when Joe on her uh, town meeting tonight, you know, she was, she was talking about all different things that she's helped. And it's actually a lot that they've really done within, you know, within Western Mass. But she said, you know, she loves emails, you know, she loves, you know, coming out and visit, you know, doing all of that. So I don't think we should hesitate to get back in touch with her again. And, you know, they did say in the letter that we did send the, the prioritized was the sewer and then it was the, you know, senior community center and uh, municipal building, you know, those were the two top priorities. And uh, I think we should get back in touch with her about that well yeah we're we're organizing the select boards so that the select boards will do the whole legislative oh, delegation wow. for all of western mass not yeah. just not just um yeah you know joe and natalie yeah problem is joe and natalie don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of seniority yeah. so Okay. Paul Mark actually has more senior seniority, so we need but to. He's running, but he's running. He's stepping down from the house, so potentially. But he's still a voter right now, and yeah, he's still a voter now. And so, chances are we can get him to help us a little. He's he's very he's very good too. So I, and we know him. So, but if his, we, we have to get select boards in his district too. So sure. I have a question to go back to the campaign concept a bit. Mm -hmm. um, does it make sense to uh, write letters to the editor or um, I, I mean, how, how, what else can we do for this campaign? And who's the, who's the campaign chair? <laughs> who's leading this effort? Is it the select board? It sort of yeah, sounds I guess the select board. I guess so. But Jennifer Remillard is getting seniors to write letters saying, you know, basically they're homeless. They need a, they need a senior center. Right. So, I mean, I think it's a joint effort. Understood. Um, but 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 who like Julie brought this up earlier. We all want to be saying the same thing. And so as, as a campaign, um, are there what's the language we should be using? It would be good. And maybe this comes from Tim's letter. Maybe yes. that, if we get I Tim's think letter, we can share, we can share Tim's letter with everyone. Once, once you guys have all signed off on it. Um, 
and then and then uh, ma said she could get the snowberry court folks and um yeah so i think we'll share tens we'll share tim's letter because he's he's pulling in deerfield 2030 he's pulling in mvp that funding hasn't kept up so we're moving on this is what we're doing as a committee as a community i mean you need to support this extra effort you know that kind of stuff all right cool you know, getting back to lily's point i think all these letters need to be i think so far we've had things they need to be put up on the google drive so that they you know that people can see them see what we're doing to try and access more more money but also i think it's it's good to um to have a list of everything that has been done. You know, not just, I mean, this is just verbally, but to say, okay, so this is being done for the senior center. These are the letters. These are who they're being sent to. So it's like, you know, the strategy of what's our ask, who are we sending it to and what's the follow-up and who's doing it. Okay. Because sending hey, letters, but, yep. Yes. So for the senior center, um, we encompass the three communities. So I'm not making it Deerfield specific because we have all of the seniors from all three communities writing mm -hmm. letters. Um, and if you look at the newsletters, did you guys get those? I know they're on the town website, but um, like for this month, for, for May, uh, what we have going on for our campaign, we have a couple of bullets or a couple of points, but we don't do a verbatim letter. We have the folks write um, in their own words. So it doesn't sound like mm -hmm. we're preparing them, it's just some points to cover. So yeah, ours are going to be different great. than what the other folks may do. I think that's all good. And I, th you know, I think from just from my former job and also, you know, writing and working with, you know, different legislators, the thing that really kind of with the stories, you know, people, you know, it's like you can go through the facts, blah, 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 but it's really the stories that are really important. And that's what people connect to. So I think that's really important. Yep, that's, that's why we have to have our story. And- um, oh, we've got stories. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll share that so people have bullet points. Okay, you know, so I, I, will, I wanna read back to everybody what I have captured in the minutes about the campaign so far. So to see if it inspires you to remember other points, cause like Denise said, it, a lot of that came up in the course of conversation, or if you think of something new, okay? Because I really, I think this is our critical next step, right? So make sure mm -hmm. I get it right in the in the minutes. Um, Tim is drafting a letter for the select board to invite Karen Polito to advocate our story, which is bad English, but you know what I mean. Um, we're looking for, um, it, this includes library relief. Um, we're looking to get Jim McGovern and Richie Neal for the federal level to come out too. Joe says she wants emails. They, they help her, right? She said uh, phone calls and also site visits. Yeah. Visits, calls. Okay, they help her. Um, the Western, you, the select board is working on bringing the Western Mass select boards coming together to lobby for our region um, and we're going to share Tim's letter to use as a basis for our efforts in um, our various, some people getting signatures, some people writing their own letters, um, et cetera. And we will put them on the drive so everyone knows what has been done. And, um, and <clears throat> as well as Tim's letter, maybe we'll, we'll uh, work on extricating points to cover, which is like what... Um, Jennifer was talking about would be helpful for the whole story too. Anything else? And just we, um, Denise made this point when we were talking about the letter is we don't need to reinvent a lot of stuff. So some of the things were actually taken from the postcard we developed, only the net zero component was highlighted because that's something that Polito and Baker are into. And so stroke their ego and hopefully they'll say, I'm almost out the door. We'll give you some money. <laughs> so that's, and as soon as it's ready, we'll post it on the, on the site. And once we've actually yeah. um, gotten it in, in the final form. And then Tim had then have good press about how Polito was so instrumental in getting us that money. And cause who knows where she's going next? 
after, you know, after she leaves office. Yep. Yeah. Well, she's she's been really good with Deerfield. She's the one that's um, supported the EMS study and the EMS mm -hmm. organization. You know, we had um, you know a regional um, grant for that. She's the one that funded the Mosquito District. You know, we were the lead on it, but I mean, she's she's done a lot for us. So this is kind of up our alley. So I mean, I feel, um, you know, we've worked with her as a partner before on these kind of innovative stuff. So this is, this will be like a next step, this whole net zero buildings and campuses. And this is how we're going to meet the climate change goals for Massachusetts as a model. And, you know, everybody else can follow in. So we just need, you know, 30 million or something. It's definitely or 40. Carolyn. <laughs> 40. Yeah. 40, probably more like 40, whatever. 50. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> money is no object. Yeah. All right. this okay. Is... So thanks for bringing that up, Lily. So is there any other business? That has well, we should pick a date. And I'm thinking um, we're trying to get the Selectman's Association to meet on, on June 2nd. Select um, board. Uh, so association. Board the, you know, the group that's going to advocate um, that Tim's right in the e had written a, this really good email to. So we're trying to get that going on. And that's hopefully June 2nd, the library commissioners, my understanding is they meet the first week of June. So I'm hoping it's that week of June 6th. Um, and so Denise will probably have to go to a meeting. So I would think we would want a CCI meeting um, and we will, should hear from Karen Polito in the next two or three weeks. So um, I would look at us having a meeting for CCI in the week of the 13th. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's like a month away, but. Yeah. Do you guys want earlier? I, I just, I'm not sure what our, uh, this was just laying out what I'm involved with. So, I mean, if people want to go earlier, that's fine too. I want to talk to Ben earlier. Okay. Yeah. Then we should have a meeting earlier just for Ben. Okay. So, MA, can you, I mean, since you've been in touch with Lauren and Ben, could you sort of um, work on that and see when he would be available? And yes. we can work from well, there. And and it's okay for me to have him pick a date and it should be in the evening. Is that correct? Probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. it could be a Wednesday or a Monday. I would appreciate it because uh, it's on my Zoom and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday, I have commitments in the evening. So... Monday, Wednesday, Monday or Wednesday. Monday or Wednesday. Or I would even do a Sunday evening too. I don't know how others feel about that. Yeah, that probably wouldn't work for me. Okay. Um, how about so around six thirty? Same, same kind of timing. Yeah. Okay. Um, December. I mean, um, December. May twenty fifth is an off select board meeting. That would be good for me. I mean, I don't know how others. And feel. um, so is. Yeah. Yeah, two different dates, MA. Pardon me? We'll give him a couple of dates. Yeah, yeah that, I think that'll work better rather than him just picking a date randomly. I think you're right. So um, Wednesday, Wednesday's an off, the 25th is an off selectman's meeting. Yeah. And, and you went, um, uh, Lily, you said a Monday, not well, the Tuesday. I just realized we just switched senior housing to Mondays. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I know. Uh, sorry. I can't. I personally can't do the twenty fifth, but that doesn't mean that's not essential. So, okay. Lily, you can't do the twenty fourth. You said the you can't do Tuesdays, right? Well, you twenty sixth right. now. You can do twenty sixth if your senior housing is not on. No, because the senior housing is moved because softball has started up again they haven't played in two years and i'm my team's catcher so i have to be there oh, yeah, but the, and the thursdays the rest of thursdays of um are have meetings you know like the um planning right. board and the conservation commission and stuff like that anyway 
what's, uh, what's the next Wednesday? The Ju uh, June June first. June eighth. And then June eighth. June eighth. June eighth is the off selectman meeting. Oh. So June first doesn't work. Yeah, because the selectman's meeting that night. So uh, how about possibly June eighth? Yeah. Yeah, and May twenty fifth we was okay still, right? Yeah. No. Okay, May twenty fifth or June eighth. Yeah. Okay. But you know, if if none of those work, what I can do is I can teach Denise or or I'll give Julie my my. No, let's see if it works, Lily. We can try to squeeze it in. Listen, you right. wait, it's hard. You're a major player here. Okay, so, so Emma, if you can get in touch with Lauren or with Ben for those two dates, May 25th, June 8th at 6.30, that would be great. Um, get back to me and then I'll get back to the rest of the committee, whether that okay. works or not. Okay. Okay. And that's gonna be a meeting specifically for that. That won't be a... Right, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just deal with yeah. the talk. We'll have questions imagine. for Ben. Yeah, I mean, you know, that that he would want to present or be there for more than an hour. So then if for some reason we had other things to report after that, we could continue after that yeah. was okay. finished. If okay, but basically that's the focus. So. Yeah. All right. That would be great. Okay. Sounds mm -hmm. good. I move that we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> We have to adjourn ours first, Carolyn. No, no yeah. we do ours inside of you, I think. Yes. We opened oh, up. Second. Yeah, you you're the outer envelope. All so right, I, second. Move, I move that we adjourn CCI at uh, eight oh eight. I second that. Anybody opposed? No. Good. <laughs> Oh, Julie. <laughs> I thought you were saying no, Julie. Okay, um, I make a motion the select board um, adjourn. No second. All right. I, Tim. You know, I mean, I, Carol. <laughs> I, Tim. I, so Tim. Okay. This is too many right. today. Too much going on. All right. Goodbye, All right. everyone. Thank it was you. a really good meeting. Thank you.